Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. Of, uh, of course, this is me, Amin, and this is Alex. And welcome. Uh, this is, of course, our new show that we're trying out this year where we go in-depth into topics that, uh, that are quite interesting. So welcome to the third episode of Let's Talk About. But before we go into our topics, I just want to give a shout out to our commenters, the our viewers that's been giving us a lot of feedback and comment. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you very much everybody for your likes, for your views, your comments and your suggestions. Uh, please keep them coming so that we can do more videos and cover more interesting topics for you. I just want to give a shout out to Aslan for saying a good discussion all around. like it. Thank you very much Aslan for that comment. Um, I want to ask for a, a little favor from you. So if you're watching this new episode, please do share with us in the comments what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. If it's interesting, we're going to look at how we're going to make it possible for you in our next episode. Uh, also, a big shout out to Mio Moose. He says, loving the show, keep it up. Again, thank you very much for that. Uh, we, we love doing the show also and we're having lots of fun researching about the topics and talking about it and discussing about it and we want to know from you also what um, topics in the future that you'd like us to talk about and finally uh, my2prx uh, he says thank you guys for doing this hope you guys keep doing this for years to come and if i'm not asking much can you make a podcast version out of this mm. a podcast is definitely in the pipeline thank you for suggesting that and it's uh, co it's good because we're gonna we're actually planning to do a podcast version. All right, thank you very much, everybody, for your comments and suggestions. Keep them coming. Uh, make sure, be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on Instagram, um, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We are sorrychinchow.com. Okay, now let's go into the topics that we're gonna cover uh, in today's episode of Let's Talk About. So, topic number one, we will be talking about mobile phones at petrol station. So, mm -hmm. I think this week um, we. Wrote a, I think Alex wrote a story yeah. about uh, a picture that was posted by Said Sadiq, right? Yeah. And then Petronas uh, issued a comment to say that, uh, oh, please don't no, use, please don't use uh, mobile phones at the petrol station. At the pump. And at the pump station, at the petrol pump, right? Yeah. And then a lot of people, it, it, it went viral. Uh, a lot of people mm. commented, a lot of people shared, a lot of people reacted on the story. So we're, go we're going to go in depth, right? And, th and, and, and really uh, discuss about are mobile phones really dangerous at petrol stations? Yeah. So what do you think? Uh, share your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, we'll be interested to find out. So that's topic number one. Topic number two is the 10-year challenge. <laughs> so again, this week, uh, social media, it's Facebook, um, Facebook in Instagram and Twitter. So a lot on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, a lot of my friends have uh, been sharing pictures of them. 10 years ago and today some of them are funny some, some of them are 20 years ago as well yeah, yeah some of them are quite quite of a quite an eye opener but there is this conspiracy theory saying that sharing uh, your pictures may reveal more than you think about yourself so are people actually using your 10 year challenge pictures to data mine and 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 find out more than than you think you're revealing. So is it is it safe to do the 10-year ten, ten challenge? Are you giving out your privacy and things like that? So we'll talk about that a little later. So that's topic number two. And then topic number three, uh, we're going to talk about innovations coming in 2019 in terms of smartphones. So we are seeing like a trend this year. Uh, and the two, the two big changes we are seeing uh, for 2019 in smartphones are displays and camera. So uh, for displays, obviously the display uh, are getting bigger and more immersive and more more vibrant and more detailed. Mm -hmm. So so what's happening? So they uh, are people are notch displays uh, go, going to exist in twenty nineteen or are they going to be replaced? And then we're going to talk about cameras. So cameras, uh, a lot of mobile phone manufacturers now are putting three cameras. Four cameras, five cameras five, as well. Five cameras, five yeah, cameras. Upcoming Nokia nine per view. Five cameras at the back, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. and three D cameras, mm, uh, and 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 a lot of a lot of cameras. So so what what does it mean? Uh, do does more camera mean better? Uh, more pixel count mean get better? Do you need a three D camera? Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. But for now, let's go into our first topic, which is mobile phones at petrol station. So a little uh, bit of a backstory. Yep. Uh, Petronas launched this app called Settle. So Settle is an app where you can actually pay for petrol on the. Can you explain what the app is about? 
So Settle is an app that allows you to pay for petrol right from your smartphone. So it's like a it's kind of like an e-wallet, but you only can use it at Petronas. So you top up your money in an e-wallet. So when you reach a station, you can actually make payment straight away from the mobile device. And once it's done, you just step up and refill. So you don't need to queue up at the counter if you use cash, or you don't need to take out your credit card and type a PIN number. So it's easier to pay from the app. But there's a few concerns about that. So firstly, people always are saying that, hey, is, is it safe to use uh, Settle and the PlayStation? But Settle has, has actually um, issued like a reminder that you must use Settle only in your car. You can't do it outside. Okay, yeah. so uh, the Settle app, uh, we've tried it. I think you tried it. Yep. You, you did a video about it. Uh, it is actually quite convenient. Yep. It's convenient for especially mothers uh, yep. who have kids Kids in the car. car. They cannot go to the kiosk or they don't have a credit card and mm-hmm. they need to pay for the petrol. So you sit in the car and you, you uh, use the app and you pay for the petrol. You go out and then you can fill y- yep. the petrol, right? So we did a story about that. We, we, made, uh, we did a video and a post. And uh, a lot of comments came in and say, oh, actually there's a problem that you can't use smartphones at petrol kiosks. Yep. Uh, and Alex, you went to the launch of Settle and you asked uh, the people at Petronas whether this, it is, what, what happened? Why, why is there a problem with mobile phones and petrol pumps? So start from the history of mobile phones mm-hmm. back then, right? Uh, yeah. Uh. So I think back then is... When, when mobile phones were, were popular, right? So there's always a safe... Uh, <clears throat> when mobile phones was released, so there's always this concern that, okay, it might cause a fire at pair stations. And to make sure that this doesn't happen at all, there's no risk at all, so they prohibit the usage of mobile phones near a station. That's quite true for the earlier smartphones because back then, most smartphones, they have uh, detachable uh, batteries. So the concern was that if, let's say, it was not attached properly, that might cause a spark and that could actually ignite the fumes. So, but for now, most smartphones have built-in batteries, so it's not really a big risk compared to last time, but they still keep the same ruling just to keep things safe. So, okay, uh, we, you mentioned to me when we discussed about this, right? So, the, the, during the old, I think, late 90s when people start using mobile, mobile phones, phones. Uh, the mobile phones, as you know, the design completely different. You yeah. have extendable antennas removable and removable batteries. batteries, and the battery is not. Uh, uh, it's not like soldered to the to the to the phone. It's wet cell also, yeah. right? So p- back then, people were using uh, nickel cadmium, cadmium before, which is like really yes. dangerous. Yep. I mean, it's it's considered wet cell now. Yep. It's uh, lithium ion, which mm. is safer and more stable, yep. um, And so it, it it was a risk because there were two problems. Number one is the battery could be loose yep. and that could generate a spark yep. and the smart right. spark could ignite the petrol yep. or the antenna could also generate a spark. I, I, I read about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, so that was the ruling when it start, when uh, when mobile phones started gaining popular, popularity in, in, the, in 90s, the public, right? Yeah. In the 90s. And then we move on to early 2000s. Phones are so much more safer. Uh, in, antennas are embedded into the body. Batteries are so much more safer. Yeah. Of course, you have outliers, lah. So people will say, okay, the Note Seven uh, had an issue, yeah. but that's because of the battery manufacturing process. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you you do sometimes hear stories about phones exploding, but I'll I usually take that with yeah. a pinch of salt, lah, mm-hmm. because. We don't know the full story. Yeah. It could be the phone was damaged from the start. The charger could be something that's not original. Or, or you, could, it could be a, maybe a third-party battery. Yeah, it could be mm. uh, overcharged. So this ruling of not using batteries at petrol stations uh, is actually a legacy ruling. Yeah. But why do they still keep it? So I remember you mentioning to me, you asked that question, right? So yeah. they keep it there because... It's actually, like a, okay, it's actually more like a precaution because it's not... Okay, apart from the possibility of, of igniting or creating a spark, another one is they want to, users to be more focused. Don't people be playing their phones while refueling? You know, refueling. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah, that's a good point, right? So yeah. even when we're driving, we're using phones and that's already causing a lot, <laughs> Don't of, do that. A lot of crashes and accidents, yes. right? Uh, I see people with their phones on the steering wheel, on the screen. <laughs> I see people in traffic jam uh, watching movies. While driving, yes. Yeah, I see people. You know, it's it's even that is very dangerous. And already there is a law. So there's a law against uh, not using phones in while driving. driving right? Yes. You can you can get summons. So yeah. that is an offense. And imagine if petrol pumps start not. Mm, uh, do not have that ruling to say oh you cannot you, you it's okay for you, you to, to use, use 
uh, mobile phones at petrol pumps, right? Yeah, imagine what would happen. <laughs> Can you imagine the <laughs> the types of people just filling up and not looking? Yeah, like, and oh, let me watch a video about refueling my car. You yeah, know? so you're going to have like a... lots of accidents of overfilling. Yes. Uh, so the it's just, I guess, mitigating the risk. Yeah. So the question is, uh, is using uh, using mobile phones at petrol pumps dangerous? Mm-hmm. Well, it's risky. Yeah, it's uh, a risk. Is yeah. it a fire hazard? Well, no longer because mm-hmm. it doesn't actually. It's very minimal, minimal to create the the sparks and all that. Yeah, but it is a risk because it's distracting. Yeah, right. It's a distraction, and then again, like for like you mentioned, right? There are people. Most most smartphone users are safe, but what about those who are using old phones, like you know the the old feature phones we had we have rechargeable batteries. Yeah, those are still a risk today. Yeah, so mm. feature phones people still use. I mean, yeah. uh, there's. There's a lot of people in the world, right? So we have smartphones, but a lot of people may, probably in the rural area, they use uh, feature phones. Even yeah. Nokia also is still selling like the 3310, yeah. which still have yeah, detachable, detachable batteries, batteries and that yes. could be a risk. I mean, yeah. you could drop it, it could pop out. Yes. A, a lot of things can happen. La. So Correct. it's better to be safe, safe. than sorry. Um, it's, it's, I guess for me, it's a matter of risk. So mm. if you do not have that ruling, you get all sorts of jokers trying to be funny. Yes, right. Imagine if that if that ruling that ruling was uh was, exist. was suddenly removed, yeah. right? So next month no more. People can start using phones in uh, petrol stations. In petrol station. You get a lot of weird challenges yeah. coming up. <laughs> you know, use the phone at, at petrol station challenge or whatever. Imagine so, if you're doing kiki challenge in a petrol station. That'd yeah, be crazy. Yeah, man. it's 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 dangerous. Yeah. So I guess in terms of the risk, so if people ask, okay, why do you still, why is not, uh, why why are mobile phones dangerous at petrol station? It's less of a fire hazard and more of a uh, behavioral uh, behavior risk, more mm-hmm. of a like awareness risk. And then now we go back to the picture, right? So can it start a fire? <laughs> which one? The phones, are? Yeah. Can, can phones start a fire? That's the biggest question. I think the answer is no. So you asked the, did you ask the people at petrol about this? Can phones start a fire? Yeah, well, when it, they say that most smart, new smartphones shouldn't be any risk, but mm-hmm. the concern is the old phones. So the old phones. But yeah. then you say the, the answer is, can, can phones start a fire? So yeah. the, the answer is no, no. I mean, there's a video on Mythbusters yeah. that, that tried this, and they, I, I, from what I can remember, they had to like really modify the phone to, to create a spark to ignite the, pe- the petrol. That's from what I remember. La. No, actually what they did was they tried mm. more phones with the phones inside the like a containment. Uh-huh. It couldn't ignite. It, they, what they did was they used static instead. And static can ignite. Yeah. So static is actually a bigger risk than mobile phones. So let's say you get from a car, it's always advisable for you to touch the metal components. The car body. Car body. Uh-huh. Because static is actually a higher risk than, than mobile phones. So static is actually a, more dangerous. a bigger problem, right? Yeah. So but you need to have the right conditions because it's also the, the, the amount of air and also the amount of fumes that are coming out from your car. The humidity. Yes. Uh, the vapor that come out from your petrol. Yep. So the conditions has to be right for for fire to ha- for fire to ignite lah. Yeah. Uh, it is a risk. So so. And that's probably uh, the reason why Seta, uh, recommends that you only use it in the car because you're in the closed environment. Where it's safer, where it's safer Number there's one, no you're, fumes. You're, there's there's no fumes. Mm-hmm. There's no petrol fumes. Number two, you're you're not distracted. That yep. means you make all your payments. You're done. You put your phone back in, in your the car, car, and then, then you, you do your up. you do your refueling. Uh, number three is uh, static risk loud. So hopefully you've already touched some metal part of your body uh, of the car, and you do not have any more static charge uh, mm. in your body. Um, so for 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 me then okay the the question is that picture. So that picture of Sadiq uh, Said Sadiq the Minister of Youth the and Sports, Youth and Sports, right, filling up uh, at the petrol station. Uh, you wrote about that, right? So the problem with that is Petronas immediately assumed that uh, he's really? using a mobile phone. Yeah. So there's other phones that he can uh, not phones uh, other other he can use a camera right he could like what we did at the, at the for the setup video so what we did was we actually have another camera to record that and then we'll transfer it when we get back to the office so you you didn't use a smartphone no, right no obviously not but did, did he did he say anything about it did he responded to that so after that the the the, the tweet handler mm. uh Tim Sadiq mm. they actually replied back to us oh we're using a camera so that's what they claim I'm not too sure so it's, it wasn't proven it wasn't la. proven yeah in any <laughs> case right you feel up a petrol station. so I mean it's this political thing is messy so I don't want to mention about yeah. all that stuff but you want to take a viral picture you you want to post it I mean make sure that you're safe lah. again if you talk about distractions yeah having a camera guy shooting without permission whatever can can be a problem 
and fueling up or posing can be also be a problem. It, it and and also number number two, it's a picture, right? So, yeah. uh, for all you know, he could just be uh, he could just be acting. I think he really so, finished fueling. Yeah, yeah maybe the pump, pump is not even active. That yeah. means you know it's not even activated. It's not even fueling. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of things going on there. I find it quite peculiar that that picture got called out by Petronas and Petronas said, "Oh, you need to be safe." Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I think it's a bit, a bit more. It's on the right, on the po- on the on the on the yeah, wave, I guess. Yeah, it seems manufactured to me. Yeah. It seems like there's some level of coordination going on between the <laughs> minister okay. and Petronas in terms of making this thing go viral. Maybe. I mean, it's a bit convenient. Like, I mean, when when we saw the picture, we we the first thing that came to to my mind, to your mind, is that hey, it might not be a camera. It, not, yep. it might not be yeah, a smartphone. F- a smartphone. Yeah. So why did Petronas make a deal out of it? Yeah. But then again, Petronas is not telling me off. They're just reminding him that you're not allowed to use smartphone. That's it. But like you said, why? Yeah, and it's very rare la, for for a company to like remind a minister. So it's I don't know. It's quite. I think it's just a spur of the moment like oh you know this thing happened so you know LPO are tweeting to Petronas so the, about the, it but the funny thing is that he uh, Petronas uh, replied to retweeted his post and posted a reply right yeah. he so if Petronas really wanted to remind him he Petronas could have replied to his directly. tweet directly okay. so the, the act of retweeting. retweeting means that he, that Petronas wants to share that picture yeah. which is again I don't know it's a bit weird lah. I guess yeah, two ways to look at it. I guess maybe it's to remind not just to him but to everyone else that do not do this, you know. Because yeah. after all, he's a minister. He should set a good example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. At the end of the day, the the question that we ask is, are mobile phones dangerous at petrol stations? The answer is, it can be distracting. It yeah. can be distracting. So, by being distracting, it can be dangerous. Mm. Similarly to like driving with your mobile phones. Then the question is, why is there still a ruling or why is there like a rule at petrol stations to not allow you to use uh, mobile phones? So Alex mentioned it's because of behavioral. behavioral. Yeah. So if the ruling was removed, then... Uh, you can uh, find all kind of jokers in the petrol stations refueling while using the smartphones. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end of the day, it's just safer to... Because refueling, the handling fuel is dangerous. Yeah. So when you're refu- refueling, right, just, just spend that two, three minutes just doing that. Just not, focus on the concentrate, yeah. And not doing anything else. Yep. Yeah, so at the end of the day, just be really uh, focused on what you need to do at the petrol kiosk. After that, you want to do everything else, please do. But at the same time, don't, don't, don't watch your smartphone, don't play with your smartphone when you're driving. Okay? Yep. Anything else you want to add to that topic? I think that's about it. Okay, so yep. that's about it for mobile phones and petrol stations. Our next topic is... 10 year challenge so mm-hmm. we mentioned about this before on social media everybody sharing a picture of them 10 years ago and uh, and now and they're like okay i've made progress or i've gone fat or whatever N- uh, we've we've found so search search of bm anip uh, wrote an article about this conspiracy theory from uh, wired magazine right that this 10 year challenge could be a tactic to actually mine data so programmers or developers could just program a bot or an AI to like look to like look at the hashtag 10 year challenge yep. and mine data to identify uh, to see how people age from from 10 from years ten, uh, in 10 how years. much they age in, in 10 years okay the first question I have when we talked about this why would people want to know why would why would people want to know how why is how much people age why is that like uh, important information? Why is that a big deal? Well, you know, like AI right, is getting better and you, AI needs to learn, constantly learn from, from various sources. And if you have this kind of uh, data set, right, because people actually help this, whoever's behind this challenge to actually create a category of, you know, these are the data sets you can learn from between, uh, or people aging between 10 years before and, 10, and now. And that's actually useful for AI because you can learn how people age across 10 years and it can go across not just uh, individuals, but across different cultures and different skin types. And that actually helps them to, you know, to must to to be able to find out how will people look like ten years from now or ten years before. But why would that be useful? I mean what mm-hmm. can let's say if I wanna use it for some dangerous thing, right? Yeah. Or like to mine your data, right? Yeah. Why would having the information of how much I age mm-hmm. uh, in ten years be useful to a hacker? 
Okay, imagine this. Let's say, for example, if they want to identify a fugitive. So the last photo they have was like five years ago. So they, with, this, with this technology, right, the AI, uh, the, the, can actually, the AI can actually predict how this person might look like right now. And it's just useful for tracking down uh, missing kids. Mm. Like for example, in India, apparently there's about 3,000 kids being rescued uh, using this uh, similar technology. So with age recognition, they can actually predict how a person might look like. So you can find points. like a, you can predict like how uh, how much a person has aged, and it yeah. can help you with finding missing person or yeah. finding pu- fugitives. fugitives. So yeah. the I guess the the intent is quite if they are if there is somebody actually mining this data from this hashtag ten years challenge, right? The intent is actually quite good, lah. It's, it's, good it's, it's, it's doing good. It's using information and then. Uh, having the information to predict how much people have aged so that they can use it to find missing persons or find find fugitives. Yep. The problem is, if people want to do that, right, why not just go out and say, okay, guys, we're doing this major study global of how much you have aged in 10 years. So if you would like to participate in this challenge, uh, not challenge, in this study, yep. please submit your photos. photos. Yeah. So why not just do that? Why why mask it in a in a 10 year challenge thing? Why do why do it like that? Well, if you think about it, who actually want to participate in that? Because you know people are being, being paranoid about submitting their private information. Like after all the Facebook issue with uh, Cambridge Analytica, people are getting paranoid about sharing information online. So if there's a study like that, I guess there are people who want to share for the benefit of mankind, but the majority, they probably won't do that. But if you do it as a challenge, like, like an innocent challenge, people are like, oh, okay, let me just do that online. We are hesitation. But the problem with that is, okay, I guess it's interesting. So maybe you get more submissions if you make it into a challenge. challenge right? yes. So now everything is a challenge. Right? You have the bird box challenge. Yeah. Where people blindfold themselves and <laughs> crash into things. I think there was a report about a person crashing uh, his, car. his car because he was doing the bird box uh, challenge. So I guess you would get more submissions, more, more data, a larger set yeah. of data. But the problem is if you if you don't tell people upfront, it's deceiving. So yeah. although your intent is good, which is to to do good, right? But if you deceive them to get the information, it's still bad. So yeah, here's the thing: who started this challenge in the first place? Nobody knows. And yeah. if you think about it, if it's public, it's going to be out everywhere. Yeah. So we don't know. Uh, we don't know who did the challenge. Yeah. I mean, who started, who started the started challenge? The challenge? Yes. We don't have like an infam- a number of like how many people are participating, but I guess from a, from like what I see on social media, a lot, a lot of people are doing it. So yeah, I mean you can mine you can mine the information because it's available in the public. You yeah. are giving out information rather feeling. sensitive information about yourself, right? Mm. Uh, you the the for me the dangerous part is that you don't know what people can use that information for. Yeah. So I guess one is that, okay, I'm just releasing a picture. That picture is harmless because it's a picture. Uh, I have lots of pictures of myself on social media. The problem with that is people could take that picture and edit it and use it for something else. There's there's this AI, right? The deep fakes, right? Deep fakes is one. So what what I wanted to start with is there's now AI that's so good that it can create a, a picture, a, a real life picture of a person from scratch, from zero, you know. And not just a picture, can they can actually make a video with a person talking. So that's the defects yeah, part, right? So right. for those of you who are not familiar, I think back in 2017 or 2016, uh, there's this phenomenon called deepfakes. So people uh, use, harness the power of AI uh, and machine learning, right, to take samples of lots of pictures that's available online of somebody, of a celebrity or whatever. Even right? video footage as well. Yeah. Like the way video, they talk. Yeah. yeah. And then you take that, right, and then you graft it into a, another video. So you can take, like, my picture of this video and then put it into another video. A lot of the deep fakes video, I'm sorry to say, are pornographic mm-hmm. videos. So you started getting really convincing looking fake videos of celebrities in pornographic videos, videos films, yeah. right? And the technology is getting better and better and better. Yeah, and they, apparently they also can use this for, you know, to ask, to do character assassination against politicians, like making a video of a politician saying something rather controversial. That's also possible. Yeah, that's, mm. uh, and you know, you cannot question whether that's been done and the yeah. amount of information that's been spread out over, over uh, YouTube, Facebook and, and, and Twitter and the amount of disinformation, like people, like, uh, with the intent of 
creating fake news, spreading fake news is very high. Yep. I mean, you talk about, so there's the news about Cambridge Analytica is a big deal, yep. uh, spreading fake news. I mean, uh, uh, categorizing uh, people into buckets, right? Make, splitting people into buckets make, make it easier to, to convince people, mm. right? So it's, I mean, it's quite scary. Lah. So for me, right, the, 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 the danger is that not what people can do with the pictures, but we, is that we don't know the potential and how far this can go. So I, somebody can create a picture of me based on if I post the 10 year challenge and yeah. with that data set of that 10 year thing, right, mm-hmm. can create like a, uh, it's possible to create like a, an uh, alternate life of me Maybe 20 years later yeah, or something. 20 yeah. years later, one thing, but the person can probably like uh, reverse engineer the information that, 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 that they have about me if I do this 10 year challenge. I haven't done it yet. Uh, have you done it? No. I'm really so it's possible to create an alternate life that like I've been here, I've been there, yes. my childhood is like this, my childhood is like that. It's, it's actually it's very dangerous. So even if the, I guess even if the 10 year challenge is harmless, I mean, but that data set is out there now for yeah. people to use and it's very uh, dangerous because you share something very personal which is your picture yeah. and um, I don't know I mean uh, so be careful lah next time when you go out and uh, try to mm. post pictures or whatever do you have anything you want to add? I guess one thing you can do right now is if your profile is public or if that post is public best to keep it private maybe within your circle of friends or close family members that would probably you know, help to contain it. Like then again, you know, like right, even right now, even if you have a secure profile, your profile picture can be misused to create fake accounts of yourself. So, <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple yeah. of friends. Uh, you have a private account, but yeah. then you have a profile picture. The profile yes. picture was is taken. It's public. Yeah, it's public. Uh, also things that you share on social media, right? Even if it's in a private environment, right? You don't yeah. know whether your close friends and relatives. We just save it and forward it. Save else. it out. Uh, yeah. you don't. I mean, if even if they don't intend to do it, maybe their phone was used by their kids mm-hmm. or whatever. It, it it could happen. I'm. I guess I'm not trying to create like a paranoia yeah. but it's a valid concern yeah. it's, it's a valid concern and it's good to have that uh, awareness at the back of your mind every time you go into these challenges which seem fun yeah. and uh, interesting and but nowadays that's how social media works right so yeah. previously before the challenges there are quizzes you have a lot of these weird weird quizzes coming from all these weird weird websites mm. and these quizzes were the the ones that provided the important information for people like Cambridge Analytica and Facebook and the Donald Trump people to to disseminate very uh, targeted fake, uh, very targeted messages uh, that's fake and that people are still it's, it's still up in debate right but yeah. that could very well um change the course of American political history and uh, and it was it started out with something as harmless as quizzes yeah so this 10 year challenge could be something as harmless as and it's quite a coincidence yeah. that the midterms are coming up yeah I mean hmm. I don't know man we can go deep into this conspiracy, conspiracy <laughs> theory but it's very mysterious right? suddenly yeah. all of a sudden everybody's doing this 10 year challenge and why 10 year challenge now why yeah. 2019 why not? why not 2020 yeah What's going on? The thing that scares me is the thing that we don't know. So yeah. we don't know what we don't know, right? Yeah. But what I can say is this. If it's, if it's something that you do want need to be seen in public, best not to post it up at social at all. Yeah. I mean... But then what is... What's fun? I don't know. Social media is quite scary. It's scary. Right? I mean, the risk is there. Yeah, it's not as safe as it used to be. Yeah. I'm trying to like skip Facebook, but it's like a drug now because it's quite... <laughs> no, it's... So, as an individual, yeah, I guess I can quit Facebook, but then my friends are there, my families are there. How do I get invited to events? How do I know what's going, <laughs> what's on? going on? A lot of people now invite you via Facebook, Facebook right? Yeah. Yeah, how do yes, you escape? Yes, no, be interested, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, so a drug is when you know it's dangerous. Yeah. You know it can harm you like cigarettes. You know it can harm you, but you still use it and you cannot escape from it. And that's... Yeah. And okay. that, what's more scary is that a lot of your account logins actually link up to Facebook. Yeah. It's like, hmm, how can I survive on Facebook like this? God, yeah. it's so dangerous, man. So, that, yeah. so Facebook is one culprit and then there's Google also. Yeah. That's another culprit. Yeah. yeah, just sharing your pictures online is very scary. Be very particular about your private data. Uh, I, I hate, I, I guess I hate to be the wet blanket, lah, but the 10-year <laughs> challenge, I don't know. Yeah. 
it might be harmless, but for but I, we just basically highlighting what's the potential risk that's involved. It might be yeah. harmless, but for me the danger is that like you're so it's so easy for the public to just jump in. Okay, jump here in. go like, my oh, information. Take it. And and that's the thing, right? Yeah. Uh, nowadays because okay, we have artificial intelligence, right? There are that is super amazing. It's things of the future. So you think, oh, it's not going to happen today, right? That could be like five, three years, ten years down the line in terms of the future, right? But I'm telling you, the things that we see today is already the future. So especially in artificial intelligence and machine learning, the the intelligence of the camera, uh, sorry, not camera, the intelligence of the robots in artificial intelligence is like growing exponentially. It's learning by the day, man. Every day is getting better and better. Yeah. yeah. So it's scary what they can do. I watched this uh, episode on... on um, Black Mirror. Okay. So the the Black Mirror episode the this was interesting because okay, uh, I can't remember which episode was that. Maybe you guys can help me out and tell me which episode <laughs> mentioned in the comments, right? So if you've watched it, give us a like. Um where this uh, couple so the the guy uh, passed away, he died, uh, and the girlfriend or wife I can't remember was having problem to let go of this person. And then she was grieving and mourning and then she saw a friend and uh, the friend recommended this service where where the, the service, right, would be able to emulate and create the persona of that, 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 that deceased person. And it's done through harvesting all the information that's Office available house. online. Okay. So it goes into your social media, your emails, your voicemails, your videos and everything, right? And then the AI will create this persona, this very convincing but uh, I guess alternate version of not alternate uh, your what's it called avatar of you is it like online only or is it virtual or is it like, like so if you watch the episode again avatar. I can't remember the okay. episode if you watch the episode right so that person started with just sending an email so she signed up for the service released all the information to this AI the AI harvest information did a, a thing right and then and then and then she wrote an email to this to this person or to that to that deceased person. Right? Oh, it's like a virtual an person, email. Yeah. You write okay. an email. You just yeah. email the to person. This person. Okay. You use that em- the same email address. So it's like my email address. I mean an email whatever. Yeah. Right? So I, so you just email me, and then after that you get a response, and it's like that person is still alive. Okay. And it's scary because it's so real that it can happen. So we have deep fakes that can synthesize voice, uh, voice, and then the facial uh, facial expression. features. Not just so the scary part is it's not just two D you know it's three D space yes and that is super complicated and it's so easily done nowadays yeah. that you can go into into the internet and find the software and just put in the sample pictures and put in the sample materials just right feed it information, and then yeah. and then the the AI will churn that out for you that's scary and sharing all these things right I mean so you know you want to do it fine. It's your life, but just be careful. Like, just be aware that people are watching. People are watching, and it's easy to watch on social media, media because of AI. You just pump in the program, and the AI will pick it up. Putting hashtag makes it easier doubly, yeah, yeah, doubly easier, right? Yeah. So, any other advice you want to give to the people out there? And just about it. If it's not meant to be shared publicly, probably don't want to post it in the first place. Yeah. Okay, so that's about the 10-year challenge. So be careful of that. Be careful of any other upcoming challenges. Uh, have you done the 10-year challenge? If you have, let us know in the comments. Have you noticed any weird stuff about you going on? Uh, let us know. <laughs> okay, so now let's move on to the third and final topic in our Let's Talk About Today. It's innovation coming in 2019. So specifically, we're going into two things. Number yep. one is display and the other one is camera. So, would you like to talk about how displays have progressed from uh, 2017 to 18 to 19? So, okay, for 2017, I guess the biggest trend was how do you make the screen bigger while maintaining a small footprint? So, you can see manufacturers are reducing the bezels with the 18 by 9 aspect ratios getting taller and taller. And the next step is how do we go from there? So, that's where manufacturers started putting a notch on the top of the phones. So, some people don't like it. Some, I'm, I'm okay with the notch. How about you? I don't have any issues with the notch. So okay, we'll talk about the notch a little bit later. So you, you mentioned about the footprint, right? Yeah. So I guess it started in 17 uh, with Samsung. I think Samsung was the pioneer in trying to like squeeze as much screen yes. real estate into a small body. Yeah, and they do by curving the edges of the screen. Yeah, yeah. which is which is a bit of a cheating. Yeah. La. But then the problem with that is you have this, this, this uh, what we call the forehead, right? So mm-hmm. if you notice... 
uh, this uh, this is if you, if you're not aware right so this is this top portion is the forehead where the camera is and the speaker is and then at the bottom is the chin so and then they've they've also pioneered the aspect ratio which is yeah. uh, 18 9 right yes 18.7.9 yeah so One so, of the first. so to squeeze more display into a device that you can still hold comfortably in your hand Number one, they curved it. Samsung curved yep, the display. display, and then number two, they've changed the aspect ratio. They make it taller instead of wider. So that's what that's what happened in 2017. Yeah. and then and then in twenty seventeen also was the iPhone ten, right? Yep, and then they put a notch on top. So the Apple way of uh, increasing. So Apple also agree that you cannot increase uh, the the width of the display so that you have uh, a bigger display. So people want bigger and bigger display. So what they did was, they also changed the aspect ratio, which is about the same, right? It is highest 21 to 9. So they changed yeah, the aspect ratio from the standard 16 by 9 widescreen to a 21 whatever. And then number two, they introduced a notch. That means they squeezed the display yeah. up. But but to also accommodate for the for the like front camera, camera and the speaker yeah. and the face ID, they had to introduce the notch. So it's a, it's, it's a bit of a thing. So Alex asked me, right, is, is the notch a problem? Actually, I when I first tried it out, I had an issue when I wanted to zoom into YouTube videos, when I wanted to watch YouTube into the native uh, aspect ratio, which is 21 by, by whatever. The thing is, on YouTube, you don't get content, uh, you don't get a lot of content that has that, that, that aspect ratio. Yeah, it's not natively that size. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the content is still 16 by 9. Yeah, even so, on Samsung when you stretch it, right, you're going to have some clipping at the sides. Yeah, you're going to yeah. miss a lot of the, it's going to be cropped, yeah, right? Yeah, cropped, yeah. So, I, after like the initial novelty of being able to zoom in and see the video full screen, but not, but, but the video is being cropped, I stopped watching it with, with zoomed in. Mm -hmm. So, the notch no longer became an issue for me. Uh, whether there's a notch or not, I don't. I don't have a problem with that. What about you? Do you have a problem with the notch? Not really. Yeah. But then a lot of people have a problem with yep. the notch. So come to twenty nineteen, screen sizes have to grow. Oh. So generally, on average, we are seeing devices increasing in terms of screen sizes, and they are losing the notch. But there's, there's, there's only so much your hand can grow, right? Yep. So there's only so much. So you, the screen cannot grow, uh, sideways. It can either grow taller. taller. Yeah. Which, which, okay, which we'll talk about the Sony Xperia yeah, later. Z4, yeah. uh, it can only grow taller. So to grow taller, they need to reduce the, the forehead and the chin. So to reduce the forehead and the chin, there's only two ways to do it, as far as we know. Yeah. So one... is a slider. So actually, there's three ways. We'll talk about the Sony after oh, this. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so there's three ways. One is a slider, slider. mechanism. So we have... We talked about the Mi Mix 2 in our previous episode, Mi right? So a Mi Mix 3. So one is to have a, to introduce a slider mechanism. This is one way. The problem with this is you have a physical movement, a mechanical, a mechanical, mechanical movement, movement yeah. and the cam the front camera is hidden. hidden. That's the downside. The pro of this is it's so cool, man. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. The other con is it's a challenge to do IP68 yep. with this mechanism for now, mm -hmm. but it could. It could work in the future. Maybe yeah. a Mi Mix 4 whatever can have yeah. IP60, 68. But, so this is one way of increasing. So as you can see, right? So let me just unlock this. So as you can see now, there's no more, there's barely a... Yeah, so it's very, it goes all the way up to the top edges. But this one, there's still... There's a, a slide of a, there's chin. a chin. La. Yeah. The reason for this chin is because the display needs to be powered, right? So yeah. this is probably the where the connectors are yeah. that connects to the board to display, to, to shoot the display. So the advantage of this is is a bit more of an immersive viewing experience. Yep. Okay, so this is one. The other one is what we call a punch hole display. You see that? It's like a tiny hole at the top left corner. So the punch hole display for me is more interesting because of the technical challenges the engineers have to overcome to make this punch hole display possible. It is literally a physical hole in the display. That means, right, you watch your TV, right? You punch a hole through your TV <laughs> and the TV still it works. works. Yeah. So, understand the complexity. Number one is the, the, um, the punch hole, right? Ne the, the display mechanism, right, needs to know that it needs to curve around the thing. 
Mm. Uh, it is good from yeah. the whole. Yeah. Imagine right if you see a wall in a, that's projected on a building like a bank of L- LED uh, on a wall, right? The computer needs to tell the LED right which portion of the display to, to project up. which picture. Mm. So that for me is a, is is really interesting that the engineers have done this. So it's an interesting engineering feat. Yep. But is it enough of a improvement that it changes your perspective and experience in terms of the, of a mobile phone? Hmm. Is it a major Major-ish. innovation? Well, it's still okay. If you think about it, it's still it, it takes up the same space as a tiny notch. It still takes up space. It's not as you don't get the full edge to edge experience like the Mi Mix Three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it is a good way to good alternative of having a notch. That's what I can say. But, at least, but one thing I like about this is that the position though, because you look at the other iterations of the tiny notch implementation, the water drop notch, they are, they are normally placed in the middle and that could be, a, could be a distraction for some people. But by placing it on the left side, the only thing it takes up is one notification icon on the top left. So it is kind of like an incremental improvement, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, does it... Uh, immensely changes the viewing experience. I After I, looking at this, uh, I cannot no. say. I mean It's better than having a notch. It's okay, it's better than having a notch. A notch, okay, you compare that to With, this, right? Yes. So this is probably the worst case example. The biggest notch you can find. No, the bigger one is the the pixel, right? Pixel has a bigger notch. Uh, pixel is deeper, but this wider. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so you can see right Okay, let us know which one do you prefer. Is the notch a big thing? Is it a what? What do you think of the notch? What do you think of the punch hole display? What do you think of the slider mechanism that we have here? So, which one do you think is more innovative? Slider, punch hole. Hi, notch. Rory. Oops. <laughs> slider, punch hole, or notch? I I'm intrigued by this, but I think it's a bit um, finicky. To me, this is the more more practical solution. More, not, not practical is the more integrated more seamless solution because I don't have to change the way I use the phone so much the selfie camera is always ready yeah it's more intuitive mm-hmm. but is it an innovation I don't think so I mean it's an improvement but I wouldn't call it an innovation the technology to make this possible may be may be called an innovation but it's not really something that I'll go like whoa I need mm-hmm. that in my phone and then we have the XZ4, right? Yep. So that one features a... What's the screen size of that? Do you remember? Uh, according to rumors, it's going to be 21 by 9. So we're 21 talking... 21 to 9, yeah. What's the, screen size? what's the screen size? Uh, 6.4, 6.5. So it's a 6.4 inch uh, smartphone with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Yeah. So what is the what is what does that mean to you, right? So the 21 by 9 aspect ratio means right, the phone is at least one... Almost one, half an inch yeah. taller than than the tallest phone you have. So I have the Note, right? This is kind of tall, right? So it's like that much taller. So it, yeah. so to solve the problem of screen real estate, right, and not not invest in punch hole or slider mechanism, Sony literally just made the screen taller. The problem with that is using the phone, the size, yeah. So people with small hands like me, right, and with the Note, right, I can't even reach up to the notification. Yeah. Yeah. But some people are fixing that problem with... Uh, with the one-handed mode, right? With one-handed mode is one. One-handed yeah. mode is a bit of a compromise uh, where, yeah. the, where the whole Screen display shrinks, shrinks uh, to, so that you can control everything uh, at the bottom quarter here. But with the interesting thing is the Samsung uh, One UI interface. Mm-hmm. It has a double, uh, double control, uh, double interface uh, area. So the top is where you view your content the bottom is where you engage with the content so that's one way to handle it so maybe samsung uh, sorry maybe sony also has an interface like that yeah they might maybe move all the finger interactions to the bottom of the screen yeah but the yeah. thing is sony in terms of, and interfaces are not like great uh they don't make great phones either so i'm not really too keen about this xz4 yeah. with their tall display uh, but we'll see. They're, they're, we're expecting them mm-hmm. to launch at Mobile World Congress. You wanted to say something? Yeah, there's one more phone we forgot to mention. Mm. The Vivo Next dual screen. So they, they hit the camera. They don't. They remove the camera completely from the front yeah. and put it at the back. So the for, for the Vivo Next dual screen, there's no selfie camera at there's all. No right? So camera. for you to take a selfie, use mm. at the back. <laughs> and there's a secondary screen at the back. Yeah. 
For me, that's even more of a headache. Yeah, it's more risk. You have two screens to worry about. Just so that you can take selfies. I yeah. mean, I'm not a person that takes a lot of selfies. Lah. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you. I don't know whether selfies is a... whether I don't know whether a front camera is a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Can I live... Can I have a camera that doesn't... Can I have a, a phone, phone that doesn't have a selfie camera? I can. I can. Really? How yeah. about most I mean, when you have group photos? If you have group photos, you just flip the thing like that. Lah. You don't need to see the display. Ma. You need to see. You need but now got AI. Right? If, so if, if there's <laughs> AI, right, the AI will probably be able to frame it or whatever. I, that's, that, there are multiple ways to do this. So if you ask me, so, so you think you need a phone with a... With yeah, there are moments you're going to need to take group photos by yourself. I don't think so. I think... Uh, well, I can survive without a... Uh, maybe I'll do a no selfie challenge. I'll tape up my, <laughs> tape up my selfie camera at the front and uh, try that for a month. But I, I think I, I don't need it. Uh, plus, a lot of selfie cameras are pretty crappy too. No, you're getting, be- you're getting better and better. Look at the, the pixel. The, the iPhone one is okay. La. Yeah, it's not bad. Good. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good in terms of the selfie camera. So that's in terms of the display. So the dual display, that one is even more of a headache. Yeah. That one is even more of a complication. For me, that one is confirmed a gimmick. That one is definitely a gimmick. I'm not going to think that there will be a lot of devices coming out with dual displays. We've seen dual display devices a long time ago. Yeah, uh, the Russian company. The Yota. Yota phone, right? Yes. So that one had a full color display at the front and an e-ink display at the back. Uh, that didn't pick up. Uh, I thought it was cool when I first yeah. saw it. I mean, being able to read and all that. But it's uh, neither here nor there. Again, it's a gimmick. So, innovations for 2019. Display is a big deal. My choice is the punch hole. Uh, I think Rory did a Mimix 3 review. He is like really on into the slider mechanism. I can understand where he's coming from, but I think that's a niche thing. Uh, moving into 2019, w- what would be your choice? Uh, Dual display, taller display, punch hole display, slider display. For this, I'll go with Rory's choice. I prefer a slider. Come on, man. Look at that. It's so clean. I guess. I mean, but for me... I would say after the novelty wears out, mm-hmm. uh, it's just going to be like a normal phone. So I choose the the punch hole display. display because, like I said, it is the most seamless and non-intrusive in terms of being intuitive to use. So I do not have to change a lot of my usage use. behavior to accommodate for the bigger display. So what do you think? Do you want a, a punch hole display, a slider display, a taller display, or a notch display? Let us know in the comments. Then... The last, the last innovation we want to talk about for 2019 uh, is cameras. cameras yeah. So, cameras, uh, a number of things happening. Um, smartphone manufacturers are introducing a lot more cameras. We see the Nokia 9 Pure View. That one has five cameras. I don't know what, what Nokia is thinking. Again, I'm going to notch that as a gimmick. So, come and revisit this episode when Nokia launched the... Uh, nine Nokia a 9 pure view yeah. and tell me what do you think is it a gimmick or is it not how, how, how many lenses can you put in yeah. what type of lenses can you put in and what, can, what does it do what does it do right yeah. what do you need 5 so we figured out you need 1 wide angle 1 normal 1 telephoto, telephoto. 1 maybe 1 chrome uh, not chrome what is it called monochrome. One chrome. Mo- 1 monochrome and the other one could be a 3D camera, the TOF, TOF camera. Yeah. It could be that, but I don't know. But then again, I don't need a physical monochrome lens, a monochrome sensor. sensor. I'm not sure about that. And then the other one that you're interested to talk about is zoom, right? Yeah. So, so hyper zoom, right? Okay, first of all, let's talk about zoom lenses. So, can you explain? So, we read, there was a tweet. Uh, by Pocket Now, I think. But by, by Pocket Now. And the tweet said... Um, stop calling it telephoto. Stop calling uh, zoom optical. lens. Uh, stop calling zoom lenses on a smartphone optical zoom lenses. So, the reason for that is... Uh, apparently, the argument was that... You think about zoom lens, right? It's supposed to be like something that's movable, right? That can zoom in, zoom out. But on smartphones, they're all like... They're all fixed. So, you have like normal one times and one two times. So, you can't say that's an optical zoom. It's actually like a fix. It's a so, different. it's like two lenses. Two lenses, lenses so it's yeah. like swapping. So, let's say, okay, we're shooting on the A7 III uh, right now, right? So, that's the A7 III. So, can you zoom in, zoom out a bit? <laughs> so, zoom in and zoom out is like that. Lah. So, where the camera physically zoom, the lens physically moves yeah. to zoom in. So, by definition, that is an optical zoom lens. Mm-hmm. On smartphones with dual uh cameras there there are two lenses one is the normal wide angle not wide angle a normal lens the other one is a telephoto lens 
So when you actually zoom in, the sensor shifts to the zoom lens. So it's not a the incremental, right? Is actually digital. So, yeah. It's done by the sensor. Uh, no, done by the software side. The software and not the lens. So people are saying, don't call it optical. What what should we call it then? Well, apparently the the right way of calling it is multi camera zoom. Multi camera zoom. So yeah. you have a normal lens and a zoom lens. lens and Fine the I mean, yeah. it's not a big deal. You want to be anal about it? Yeah. You want to <laughs> yeah. You want to be anal about it? You can do that, but to the consumer, you call it a zoom or you call it optical zoom or whatever. It, to them, it's how useful it is, lah, yeah. right? I guess because for normal consumer, for layman, right? I think the difference is okay. Optical and digital. That's the dif- that's the the comparison they want to see. Optical zoom for most users is that is zoom op- using optical using an actual lens, not like a digital zoom where you use a software and just you know we we punch in to a bigger size. Yeah. Mm. So I guess if you talk about layman, yeah, I think they they should know the difference. So the most the most you can get in terms of uh, optical zoom, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, on a phone is with the mate. 20 and the P20 mm. Pro you it's get a three times three times no uh, three times or five times optical is three times uh-huh. but if you with hybrid zoom is five times so with hybrid hybrid means it's optical plus digital, digital. Yeah. so you call that op, uh, hybrid, hybrid zoom. zoom so maximum on a phone you can get today is five times not ten ten times three times ten times which one I'm not, uh, so, so the most is yeah. five times zoom Hybrid zoom, yeah. Of okay. course, you can go 10 times, but there's like fully digital zoom. So, that's... 10 times is fully digital zoom. Yeah. So, the next innovation in 2019 is going to be a 10x hybrid zoom. It's still hybrid? It's still not hybrid. optical? So, it's actually uh, introduced by Oppo. So, Oppo uh, yesterday had announced a new camera module. So, the promises 10 times hybrid zoom. So, you have uh, it's a three it's a three camera setup. So, similar to Huawei, you have uh, the main camera that takes the normal clear shots. You have a, a ultra wide angle lens. And also the third one is actually an optical zoom, but it's, it's using a periscope mechanism. So that moves from zero to, sorry, one to five times. So that periscope allows, so a periscope mechanism is like this, right? So imagine this is the camera sensor, right? Mm-hmm. So the light comes in through here. Uh, sorry, the camera sensor is like this, right? Okay, let's say this is the camera hole, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so the light, so, so light comes in here and then there's actually a barrel inside yeah. the phone. Uh-huh. So that actually uh, con- adjusts the lens and the sensor is actually over here. Okay. So it's like a 90 degree angle. So the, the sensor is here, the light comes in through here yeah. and then there's a mirror here yeah. that reflects prism, the light here. Yeah. And then there's a mechanism here that slides. Uh, yeah. So that, that gives you incremental zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Like an optical zoom lens. Yes, yeah. that's closer to the and optical. So it's... So that's like the it's called a periscope because it works with that periscope effect la, where yeah. the 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 light coming in is reflected to the sensor. Mm-hmm. And that's like a big deal. Is that like an innovation for you in twenty nineteen or it's not really new because Asus has done it before with the Asus Zenfone zoom. So that came with three times optical zoom and uses a periscope system. But really if you look at Asus, right, okay, um it wasn't really that great. Yeah, it's cool that you can zoom in really close. Uh, but in terms of image quality, it's not anywhere close to the top flagships. So to me, do you need more than 5 zoom? If you ask me, the answer is no. I probably, what's more important for me is a normal camera, at least two times optical zoom and ultra wide angle. Do you ultra, need more? Yeah. yeah, ultra wide angle. So when you do zoom, right, there are a number of problems. Number one is picture quality. So without a lens, if you do digital zoom, it's actually cropping into the sensor. You're actually zooming into the sensor. You're actually lit- literally zooming into the picture. It's like going to Photoshop and then resize 200%, 200%, yeah, you're just and then, blowing it up. And then the, the phone will take the sensor, uh, the sensor image, lah, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so that's one. Uh, picture quality. Number two is stabilization. So when you're zooming in, right, like you see people who zo- use ultra long lenses at football matches right for sure they will have it on a tripod or on a monopod or on a wall or something to stabilize the the image so when you zoom in the longer you zoom in right the more shaky shaky the camera is and to have uh, smartphones that are on handheld the zoom the longer zoom becomes less practical Mm -hmm. so for me that's the problem I agree with Alex. Having maybe, I, I think maybe 5X would work lah if you're at a concert and the phone is really good at low light and really good at stabilization. But having a wide angle lens is much more flexible and much more practical for, yeah. uh, for, for, for use. Especially if you like taking selfies, having a wide angle selfie lens yeah. is awesome for group selfies and also panorama and all that. So in terms of camera, right, I guess the innovation will come from what you can do and how good the low light 
uh, capabilities of a camera is. Yeah, speaking about low light, actually, if you look at most of the telephoto cameras, right, the two times uh, the two times of telephoto lens is only practical to be used in in day bright time. in daytime. This is for the iPhone one, right? Even iPhone as well. If it's low light, right, because you look at the aperture, it's only two point four. It's going to be very dark. So in low light situation, in most cases, you're actually using the main camera. Yeah, so for the yeah. iPhone, the because they want to make sure that you are able to capture like really good pictures in low light, even when you zoom in low light, it detects that that's low light and it will not allow you to use the telephoto. actual physical telephoto lens, yes, right? Yes, you use the main camera and yeah. crop in instead. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it's like, for example, Mate, the, the Mate 20 and the P20 Pro uh, probably, okay, the Pixel doesn't have dual lens, it doesn't have optical zoom. So the ones that have optical zoom is the Mate 20 and the yep. P20. Yep. Those are the good ones in low light. And not just that, they also have additional AI stabilization that makes a lot of difference. Yeah, and the night mode, right? So yeah. for me, the big, the biggest innovation in 2018 is, uh, is uh, night mode. And here's a tip, you can use night mode in daytime. Try it if you have the P20 or the Mate 20. You can see amazing like depth details. in terms of details and uh, contrast. It's really great. Uh, so I don't know the other one we talked about earlier was uh, maybe 3D selfies if people start using 3D cameras yeah. but that's probably another topic lah. so in terms of cameras in, the, in terms of physicality right, the sensors are going to get better whatever uh, the pictures will, will gradually get better but it's more of the features what can you do with it yeah. that's, that's going to be amazing lah. so the season of mobile phone launches are gonna ha- is going to happen really soon which is in February, February during Mobile World Congress we'll be there to cover all the latest launches so be sure to keep it locked on to searchinshow.com so I guess that's pretty much it any closing points you want to highlight for the innovations in 2019 flexible displays it's going to be something that's going to be new um, I think most recently okay we, we know that there's a FlexPy from China, Samsung's doing it, and coming up next could be Motorola. So what has it that they might come back with a new Razer with a flexible display inside? Yeah, so I saw the article, uh, we talked about flexible, flexible folding displays, displays. Uh, in our first episode. Uh, I'm kind of still skeptical, I think we, we called it that we might not see a folding phone coming this year from Samsung or whatever. Uh, we could be wrong, but for for me, I think you will agree that f- folding displays and flexible displays are still by far gimmicky at mm-hmm. the moment. Yeah. Uh, because I'm happy with the screen sizes I have now. I don't need suddenly a convertible device mm-hmm. where it's a phone and then it's a tablet, tablet. and it's a whatever. Uh, if I want to use a tablet, I'll use my tablet. If I want to use a computer, I'll use my computer. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, and that's the end of our third topic. And this is the end of our Let's Talk About for this uh, for this time. So what do you guys think? Again, let us know what you think of uh, our episode. Uh, what do you think of the topic that we talked about? Uh, what do you think of the show? Um, very much like your opinions. Uh, if you like the video, please give us a, thumb up, a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to comment and let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Follow us on uh, Twitter and Facebook, searchinshow.com. We also have a Basa Malaysia, Basa Melayu edition at bm.searchinshow.com. Follow them on Twitter and Facebook as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. This is the... This is Let's Talk About. Catch you guys <laughs> later. Bye.